the next phase after the test net is out and then Shelly's going to complete and we're looking at maybe Q4 for Shelly based on what we were telling us earlier, then what comes after Shelly? Uh, we got Google, yeah. right? Yeah, absolutely. So Shelly is decentralization, right? And so right now we're running on federated nodes operated by IOHK and partners. And so we need to you know, move towards decentralization so we're not controlling the network. It's worthwhile talking a little bit about how that will happen. So we won't just throw a switch and all of a sudden we'll be running on a thousand nodes that we don't know anything about. Right? So there's a, there's a parameter we can set, which, which, which uh, uh, is like a setting of how we walk down the path towards towards decentralization and that controls the proportion of nodes who are controlling uh in relation to the proportion that, that are that are uh, that are uh, uh just in the public and obviously we want that eventually to be 100 percent. and so however you don't know what's going to happen as you start to, to see how the network is operating as we go down that path and there's always a possibility we'd see something we don't like in the way it's operating in the way that we an attack vector we didn't see and so then we could back it up uh, release a fix and then and then continue forward from there. So we have ability to control that, which we feel like is the right way to do it safely. And then Gogan is smart contracts, and so that's that's actually really exciting because if you think about it, even Shelly is is foundational, right? It's really important. It's actually a big deal. So if you think about proof of stake, completely decentralized with stake pools and delegation, that's brand new, that's never been done. And that's very meaningful because that's proof of stake in a decentralized matter, manner and, and performant enough to operate you know, enterprise class uh, uh, applications on it. And so uh, uh, that's brand new and that will be a, you know, that's something we're really excited about. But at that point, you still can't build applications on it. Uh, there's no smart contracts yet. And so that's where Gogan comes in. Gogan is smart contracts. And so what's interesting is that that effort's been running in parallel. It's not like we, we, we're going to finish Shelly and then catch our breath and then start Gogan. It's been running in parallel for years, which, again, in the same manner, it started with research and then it went into prototyping. And then we've been implementing and working on that. And the outcome's really exciting. And so we have Plutus, which is our smart contracts language, which is, which is embedded within Haskell, which is a a language which is very helpful to programmers in being able to validate uh, uh, what they've written does what they think it does, which has been a real issue in smart contracts on other platforms. Not to throw any shade on those, I, I often say, you know, we we stand on the on the shoulders of giants in this industry, and folks that built earlier smart contract platforms, they they are the giants, and they are the shoulders we stand on. But but I think we all you know want it to move to the next level. And so uh, lots of us are focused on that. And uh, 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 we're really excited about what's coming. It's quite close to done. The real issue is to get Shelly far enough along so that we'll be ready to implement uh, 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 Gogan and the smart contracts and Plutus into uh, uh, Cardano. And so in addition to having a Plutus as a smart contracts language, we've also uh, been at work on a domain specific language for financial contracts. And so this is Marlowe. And this is not a complete Turing complete language where you can build any logic. It's very specific for financial contracts because you know those are the ones that are going to be most prominent within Cardano. And um, uh, it's really nice because it's focused to allow uh, a, a, a programmer who's not as technical, but who might be a, a domain expert. So let's assume it's an application in the insurance industry. There's going to be an industry analyst who's an expert in those kinds of contracts. And you would ideally want that person to be as close to the coal face of development as you could get. And so that's what Marlowe enables. They would be able to, without a lot of technical development background, build smart contracts using that language. And there's even an easy to use development platform that you can use, which is called Meadow, which has the, the sort of raw, you know, close to the metal um, uh, Haskell and Plutus on one side, and then it has an easy to use interface um, uh, on the other on the other side, which kind of uh, you know in a in a WYSIWYG or a ad lib sort of a way lets you fill in the fill in the gaps to design your uh, uh, your smart contracts. And 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 however, that's still implemented within Plutus and within Haskell. So this is still a very enterprise class approach. This is still the language that banks use when they're looking to program something that they know is going to flow billions of dollars through it, and they have to make sure it gets right. Because that's our assumption that this 
Cardano network is going to be uh, uh, the foundation for, for many billions of dollars of transaction. And so we need to provide a platform that gets it right. And we need to provide the people who will build applications on top of it, tools and means to make sure that they get right, right too. So that's what's coming in Gogan. And, and actually, because it's, it's quite far along, uh, uh, I think it's going to be roughly a quarter after Shelley. 